So question number four is a really challenging inverse question. It says, suppose f of g of x is equal to x, and that f of x is equal to the square root of x. Find g prime of four. Well, the first thing that I want you to note is that because f of g of x equals x, we know that f and g are inverses. We also note, having looked at three samples already, that to answer questions about g, it might be helpful to look at the inverse of g, which is f. Maybe that'll get us what we need. So let's start our mission here. Let's just talk about g for just a moment. On g, we have this partial point, 4, comma, something. We don't know what 4 is paired with. And our objective will be to find g prime of 4. Once we get this, we'll have our answer. So I'm really focusing in on what I need to find. Now let's see how this information relates to the graph of f or the function f. Now, if on the graph of g we have this point for blank, then there must be the corresponding inverse point on f, which is blank, 4. And what this tells me is I can figure out where f is equal to 4 by setting up an equation. The graph of f is defined by root x, and we want to know when that output is going to be 4. And to figure this out, I'm going to square both sides, and I get x is equal to 16. So on the graph of f, when x is equal to 16, the output is going to be 4. And knowing this helps us with the graph of g. We know that if the point 16, 4 exists on the graph of f, that the point 4, 16 exists on the graph of g. Now the next thing that I want to do with the graph of f or the function f is find its derivative. Now it says f of x equals root x or y equals root x which is the same as x to the one half. Taking this derivative we get one half x to the negative one half which is the same as one over two root x. Now if I want to evaluate this derivative at 16, I might choose to notate that in the following way. The derivative at 16 is going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 16. Since the square root of 16 is 4, we get a derivative that's equal to 1 eighth. Now if the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at the point 16, 4 is 1 eighth, that would mean the slope of the line tangent to the graph at g at the corresponding inverse point, 4, 16, will be its reciprocal, which will be 8. So the answer to this question is 8. This question was a lot more challenging because you actually did need to algebraically find the inverse in order to answer the question. So my little note at the bottom does not apply to this question. We did have to find the actual inverse by hand in order to answer the question. So oftentimes you don't need to find the inverse, but in this time we did have to algebraically find it. Let's move on to our last sample question, which is taken from an AP exam. Okay, so we're on question number five now, and it's presented to us a little bit differently than all the other questions. All the information that we need to answer the question is given in the way of this chart here. And I've seen questions of this type on AP, so it's really important that you pay attention. The question says, for two functions f and g, f of g of x equals x. Use the chart below to find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals negative 4. So the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is the fact that f of g of x equals x. We've seen this in several earlier examples, and we know that this indicates that f and g are inverses. Now, my objective overall in this problem is to write the equation of a tangent line. And to write the equation of a tangent line, I need two things. I need a point, and I need a slope. So let's see if we can seek out these two things. I'm going to start by drawing an arbitrary graph which represents the graph of g. And I'm going to pick a random point on that graph. And the primary point that I'm supposed to be looking at on this graph of g is when x equals negative 4. So I'm going to call this negative 4 comma something. Now I'm going to look at the chart to see if it reveals to me what g of negative 4 is. So my g function is identified right here. But if I look at the top, 
none of these values are negative 4. So I know what g of negative 3 is, I know what g of 0 is, and I know what g of 5 is, but I don't know what g of negative 4 is. So this y coordinate is still unknown to me. Now, I will try to seek that out in some other way. Now the other thing I need to know is the slope of the tangent line at this point, and this would be notated using g prime of negative 4. Now g prime is also in our chart, but we still don't know what negative 4 is on the top here, so I can't figure out the slope either. So I've got these two unknowns here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the tangent line so I have the visual of what exactly it is I'm trying to write the equation of. Okay, so there's the tangent line. I've got this partial point, negative 4 something, and I can't seem to find the something just yet. And I need to find the slope of that tangent line, which requires figuring out what g prime of negative 4 is. And that's also not indicated on the chart. But I do know that f and g are inverses. So how does this help? Let's start to figure out what I know and what I can glean from the information that I've already written down. Now, on g, there was this partial point, negative 4, blank, which means on f, there is this corresponding inverse point, which would be blank, negative 4. So now, let's look at our chart, and let's look at the graph of f, which is the top row. And is there a place where that function is sent to negative 4? And lo and behold, there is. We know that when x is equal to 5, f is sent to negative 4, which tells me that this must be 5. f of 5 equals negative 4. And if this point exists on f, then the point negative 4, 5 exists on the graph of g. So we've just now figured out what this point is here. Now we've got the full ordered pair. Now the next thing that I want is f prime of 5. This is going to be the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at 5. And we notate that f prime 5. So if we look at the second row, f prime of 5 is sent to negative 2 sevenths. So if the slope of this tangent line is negative 2 sevenths, then on the corresponding inverse point, the slope would be negative 7 halves. And this is great because if I go back to the initial things that I needed to find, I needed to find a full point, and I now have it, and I needed to find the slope of the tangent line at that point, and I now have that. So using point slope form, I'm going to say that the answer to my question, the equation of the tangent line is going to be y minus 5 is equal to negative 7 halves x plus 4. So this was a really interesting inverse question because all of the information was presented in a chart and you had to be comfortable reading that chart and interpreting all of the values.